everybody, and you are welcome to the Shabbat of this morning. And uh, we, I, I give thanks to the Lord for, this, for, for His love, for His grace, and for His protection. And the opportunity has given to us to see this beautiful sunny day in the land of the living. I thank God for, his, for, uh, for the glory uh, that He has given to each and every one of us, because we are the sons of what? Of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The parasha of this morning is known as Parasha uh, Achremot. The parasha of this morning is known as Parasha Achremot, which means after the death. After the death of the sons of Aaron. After the death of the sons of Aaron. And I subtitle it, the subtitle, the subtitle of the parasha of this morning is From darkness comes the light, and both are intertwined. From darkness come the light and both of them are intertwined they are inseparable you cannot separate them i know that mo mo most of us will have this understanding god destroy darkness god destroy darkness god i don't want darkness but if god destroy the darkness you can't have light it's not possible everything is intertwined so it is a balance we have to understand what god is trying to tell us and god is trying to give us this understanding from the beginning, from the beginning, he said, and there was darkness in the beginning. Everything was total darkness. Did the, the light did the, the light appear just like that? No. That, like, that darkness was forced. Then light comes from the darkness. And we're going to see that as we read through uh, this parasha, this understanding. The understanding that God is giving us about uh, uh, the sacrifice, about the ritual of Yom Kippur. What, what, what is this? One for Adonai and one for Azazel. What is, what is God? Is God telling us that Azazel is equal to, to him? That is not what God is saying. Is God is telling us that, oh, that is this Azazel that, is, you know, that, can, that has the same power, the same authority as God? No. And that is not what God is saying. But what God is saying that there is the left side and there is the right side and both has to be balanced. And we are going to see what the understanding of this. So please put your, your cap on and be ready. Okay? All right. I have a question this morning. I'm going to start the pressure of this morning with a question. And the question is for every one of us. Every one of you that, that is looking and that is watching and that is sitting down and that is hearing me. What does it mean that the holy priest or the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, make atonement for the holy places? For the tent of meeting, for the altar, and for the holies of holies. Right? What does it mean that the Kohen Gadol, what is the understanding, what is the meaning that the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, will make an atonement for what? For the tent of meeting, for the, uh, for the sanctuary, and for the holies of holies. Why? Uh, 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 make an, 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 an atonement for it. The, the meaning of atonement is, is to say that, that are, are you saying, is the Torah telling us that the holy of holy, that it's a sin there? But you don't have to, you cannot commit sin in the holy of holy, no? But the Torah speaks that the Kohen Gadol, Aaron, the Kohen Gadol, has to make atonement for the holies of holies. It has to be cleansed. It has to be cleansed. Not only you and me, not only uh, uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the temple, no, but also the holies of holies has to be clean because of iniquity. Let's see how come iniqu how did iniquity get into the holies of holies? Is there no sanctuary from sin and evil? Is there no sanctuary? Is there not any safe place where? There is no sin where there is no evil. That is the question. Is there no safe place under the sun? Is there no safe place in, in the sanctuary? Is there no safe place in the temple where there is no sin at all? Lord is telling us, no, there is no place. The sin everywhere. But to, in our understanding, to us, we are going to say, but it is, it is, what, it is impossible. Because the holies of holies, there cannot be sin there, right? Let's see. Are we not 
read ourselves of Azazel, the incarnation of evil. What is the meaning of Azazel? Azazel is, he, 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 the, our rabbis are interpreting it as the incarnation, or, 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 or what? The, in, the, incarnation, the, uh, the incarnation of evil. That is the evil instinct, the evil desire, you know, the, 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 the evil, um, um, the evil, um, I mean, uh, thought, you know, the, the, the evil inclination. Now I'm trying to think. The evil inclination of a man, of a human being. Okay? This negative side of us. Remember that everybody has a negative side and everybody has a positive side. There is nobody that is completely evil. No. And there is nobody that, that is completely good. No. Everybody has the positive side and the negative side. That what I want us to understand. And remember, in the what in the in the uh, sacrifice in the ritual of the Yom Kippur, the two goats, the sacrifices of the of the bulls and the ram and, and so on and so forth. But we just get rid of ourselves. We, we get rid of this evil inclination, this negative side of us. We are getting rid of it. But why is God saying you have to see do what? Purify the holies of holies, as of uh, as of to address this uh, uh, anomaly of the atonement for the holies. The rabbinical imagination creates a strong and stunning insight recorded in the Talmud in the Yoma 69b, and in the Talmud, I summarize it uh, uh, this way: He said, "The evil desire." The tempter of idolatry that has destroyed the sanctuary, burned the temple, slain the righteous, driven Israel, the Hebrew people, into exile, is still dancing among us till today. It is discovered. Is it? Is it? It is discovered neither in the neither world nor in the unholy places, but coming forth out of the holies. Of holy like a fiery lion. It is the last place one would think of finding Azazel. I repeat again. This uh, 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 negative side, this evil side, this evil desire, this temper, you know, is one that tempt everybody. This evil tempt you, tempt me, tempt, it, tempt each and every one of us. This, this evil things that slain the righteous, this evil desire that drove Israel out toward into what into slavery or into what into exile, this is still among us. This negative desire is still among us because we are still human being. Is still among us till today, even though the angels themselves they still sin. How much more human being? He said. It is neither discovered in the underneath the world. No, it's not under the sea. It is not in some hidden places. It is not in, 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 in some uh, in some strange places. No, but this evil desire actually is coming from from the holies of holies, like a fiery lion. Now what uh, 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 Tamud Yoma sixty nine B said when our rabbis when they pray. They pray and pray and pray and they fast and I say, God, we want to slay the evil desire. We want this evil negative, the negative in man to be destroyed. They pray and pray and God said, okay, you want it to be destroyed? I will give it, I will give it unto you. Don't worry. And out of the holy, of, of holy came out a fiery lion. Like, and the, and, and, and the, and the, and the rabbi say that, and that is the word, that is the negative side. The man, the, the, the what the yeser, the evil inclination. It came out like a fairy lion on that day, and a, and a rabbi, a, 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 a priest, they capture it and they want to, to slay it. What happened next? Let's see. The sages deliberate. After capturing it, they deliberated and they said, Okay, and proposed to cast it into a leading pot. And to close the opening with the lid, because lid will slay the evil temp uh, tempter, so that the war will be released from its sinister grip. But they soon learn that the su su suffocation of the yeser will simultaneously smother the uh, the uh, the libidina uh, energy 
indispensable for civilization. There is then no recourse left but to release the Yetzel. Before doing so, some of the sages suggest that perhaps they can pray to the heavens for have mercy. Rahami Apaga. What was that? What, what, what am I saying here, my people? What I'm saying here is, our rabbis, after the, uh, the, the lion was captured, I mean, represented, right? That the, 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 the negative inclination, the evil <laughs> inclination, when it was captured, they, 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 they now decided, right, to suffocate it, to kill it. They capture it and they put it in a pot and seal it. But very soon they realize that no, we can't kill it. We can't what? We can't kill it. Because if we kill it, we will not have civilization. We will not have knowledge. If we kill it, we will not have what? Understanding. Remember, there is a saying that Yeshua said. Yeshua said, be as wise as the serpent and as harmless as the dove. Remember, the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom was given by God to the what? To the serpent. To Yetzel. So if you kill it, you are, you, you are, you, 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 you are, you, you are denying yourself civilization. You are denying you, 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 yourself knowledge. You are denying yourself wisdom. You are denying you, yourself understanding. So you can kill it. So they, they now say, you, you, you know what? We have no choice than to do what? To release it. Remember, there is always positive side and the negative side. And the same thing Yeshua is giving us this understanding. What our rabbis gave it to us, but Yeshua gave us in a word, in a simple form, so that we understand. The ordinary man, I mean, if you are not a rabbi, if I read all this thing, you don't understand it. You know, it's just like it's like a mathematical e e equation, you know? E is equal mc squared. So what what is that? E equal mc squared. That is the formula of, a, of an atomic bomb. So what does that mean? I don't know. But I, I know that Einstein said that E equal mc squared. But I need somebody to explain to, 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 to me what does that mean? How did you arrive as E equal mc squared? So the same thing here that Yeshua helped us to break it down. He said, you have to be as wise as the serpent. The knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding is given to the serpent. You can't kill the Yeser because you need it for you to strive. For you to grow, for you to move on in civilization, in understanding, in building, in designing, in having electricity, in having cars, in having all these things that you need. You need it. You can't just say, no, I don't need it. No, you need it. But what is our city telling us? He said, okay, instead of us killing the Yeser, can we ask God for, for have mercy? Have have mercy. No, no, just, just to have, have mercy on, on what? On the SF, on the, uh, on, on the evil inclination. We don't want to have mercy on it. We want to kill it. But let us ask God that, okay, you know what, God, give us, let me have, have, have mercy on it, right? But we need to realize, we need to understand that the heavens does not grant half mercy. The heavens, God does not grant, grant anything half. He grants you full or he doesn't grant you at all. That is it. God either grants you full completely or you don't have it at all. That is no half. And this what this makes our sages to realize that the heavens, that God does grant full or doesn't have give you anything at all. So this understanding makes our rabbi to understand that, oh, actually there is purpose for yourself. There is purpose for you said for this evil inclination. This evil inclination has a purpose from creation from the beginning. It was from the beginning. This darkness is into intertwined with the light. We cannot separate it because in our understanding, in our world, the physical world, this planet, this physical world that we live in, we tend we want to do what we want to separate. This is good, this is bad. This is light, this is darkness, but it, 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 it doesn't work that way. There is no, it's not, the world that we, that we live in is not black and white. There is some gray areas, 
that you have to understand that, that this gray part that that that's the darkness and the light intertwine. We need, that is what the understanding that God is trying to, to, to let us know through the sacrifice of Azazel. There is some area that we might not understand. It's a fine line. That you have to walk very, very carefully, very gently. God doesn't want us to be an extremist. God dis dis dislikes extremism. Because when you say, oh, everything is only light, light, light. You are lying to yourself. That is a pure lie. And when you run to this side and say, oh, everything is darkness, darkness, darkness. You are lying. Both are intertwined like the DNA. Right? We need to understand that. So our rabbi now asks, that's okay, in, in that case, since we cannot kill it, now since we cannot, uh, since we cannot have, one, since we cannot have half mercy on it, we either have full mercy or no mercy at all, and it's not in half. So let us do it this way. So they bring up about an idea, and these are the ideas. Let there be lost, but let it be restricted to one spouse. What does that mean? Let us have lost. Because if you said that you want to kill the Yeser, that means that you cannot have lost. If you kill the, the Yeser, that is not lost. If you kill it, that is, you cannot make love with your spouse. You cannot reproduce. You cannot increase. And God said, increase and fulfill and feed what? Feed the planet. So if you kill it, I feel specifically. You see? So our uh, rabbi said, okay, let us have lost. But this lost, I mean this, I mean, they call it lost, meaning, I mean, to reproduce. Let it only be with someone's spouse. I mean, with your wife. Not with another person's wife. Or not with another person's, uh, uh, um, I mean, wife. You know? Only with your wife. Okay, and they, and, and they continue. They say, let there be uh, 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 let, let there be ambition and aggressiveness, but let it be restricted to noble and peaceful ends. Okay, God, will, because the yeser grant us ambition. It is yeser that make you to be ambitious. It is, it is the yeser that make you to be aggressive. It is it, it is the negative side that gives you all these things. And they say, okay, you know what, God, okay. Let it and then say, okay, let us only have it only to do what is what what is positive, not negative. You can have ambition, not the, the, the ambition to, to, to you know there are people that have negative ambitions. They are also, oh, you see, Lilia is she has a lot of money, right? Okay. Instead of, instead, of, instead of them to say, God, bless me like the way you bless Lilia. Bless me, make me. As you make uh, Lilia and try to make friends with Lilia, say Lilia, can you show me the way, right? But their own, so say, oh, you see, I'm going to kill her. Wickedness, that is negative, right? But we have, we can have um, um, ambition. is not bad, right? Ambition is good because that makes you to, to do what? to increase, to go further, to go up, up, right? It's very good, but not the negative one. God is talking about the positive one. We can be aggressive. It's, it, aggressiveness is not bad. But a positive one. I want to be aggressive in the things of God. In the things, in, in the things of holiness. In the things of, of righteousness. I want to drive righteousness to grow. I want everybody to be what? To be righteous. That is good. But when you are aggressive in a negative way, it's, it's bad. So that is what you know, all these things are granted by, by yourself. He said, let there be anger. But let it be limited to righteous indignation. Let us have anger. Anger is good. It's not bad. It depends on the way you see it. We have righteous indignation, just like the, in the life of who? Of Pihas. You know Pihas? Pihas, the son, the, great, uh, the grandson of Aaron, the Kohengador. He was angry, but righteous angry, that what is this man doing? Why are you doing this in the face of all Israel? This is, this is insane. This is evil. And he went and killed Cosby, right? That is it. So that is, called, that is what we call righteous indignation. Not negative indignation. Not, not saying that something is good, but your job is to destroy what is good. Why do you want to do that? Right? So, all this thing is in the power of the Yeser. We need it. We, we need it. But what our, our rabbi is saying, we don't need the negative side of it. We, want to, we can use it to benefit ourselves. 
We can use it to benefit our understanding. We can use it to benefit our physical world, but not the negative side of it. He says, to continue, that, uh, okay, in so, in, so, in, in so praying, they will extract the best of the impulse and the instinctive energy within it. Because within the yourself, there is a, a positive impulse. There is something that is, it's, it is not everything is not negative in yourself. There are some positive things that we can gain, that we can get, some positive energy that we can, that we can get from it. But the plan is abandoned because of the profound reality of principle. Half are not granted from heaven. As I said, God does not grant anything that is half. God either grants it full or not. The world in which we live is not passing out. Neatly label good and bad. Recognition of ambivalence. That means the, we need to understand that in the world that we live is in ambivalence. And what does that mean? The world that we live is mixed. It is not like in the heavens, where everything is, is, is se separated, is distinct. This is good, this is evil. But in our own world, it's different. Our world, everything is mixed, everything is intertwined. So it, it, it takes the, 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 the understanding, the knowledge of the Torah for us to be able to walk this fine line. Where is the fine line? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And what? And darkness was on, on, upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God, of God moved upon the surface of the water. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Light came from darkness. It is not the opposite. It is not darkness came from the light. I, was, I always give us this example. There is a, a symbol they call yin yang. I don't know if, if you understand it. A symbol called yin yang symbol, right? It, it, I think they, they have in the flag in the flag of Korea, South Korea, something like that. They have white, and in the white that is black, and they have black, and in the black that is white. It's intertwined. That is that is it, it, a knowledge, the wisdom of the wise. It is us. That the, the, the of that live that is living in the twenty first century that they are trying to tell you or some kind of uh, of a religion trying to tell you that oh without this one you cannot enter into the kingdom of God or without this one you cannot enter into the ki ki kingdom of God they because they make it extremist they become extremism and this is, and God hates extremism anything extreme God doesn't like it because everything in God is balanced. We have to understand that balancing the equation is the most is the most important, and God is a mathematician, and he balance all is is what is equations. The sacred and profane are intertwined. There is no place, no act, no person that is wholly evil and wholly good. There is no that that there is no place under the sun. There is no act. There is no person that is either. They say, "Oh, this person is full of evil." No, if you look very very deep, there's something good about that person. There's something positive about that person. And there's no one that say, "Oh, it's only good, 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 and, and everything is good about it." No, look perfectly well. There's some negative thing that the person is doing. They say in the uh, in the book, they say there is no righteous, no man except God. Under the sun, no one. We are all what? Human beings. Zohar explained that when God came to create the world and to reveal what was hidden in the depth and disclose the light out of darkness, both were wrapped, were wrapped in one another. Both darkness and light were wrapped in one another. They are, inter they are, they are like two brothers, inseparable. That intertwined. So it is the, it, it is that light emerge from darkness. The, the, the light emerged from darkness, and from the impenetrable came for the profound. Giving us another example. Let's look at let's see uh, uh, Samuel the prophet. Samuel is what? Samuel is the great 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 grandson of Korah. Right? You see? And in the, in, in the book of Psalm, there 
there's a lot of, of, of songs written by the descendant of Korah. Their father was what? Was an evil man. Right? He rose up against who? Against Moshe. And he took with himself other men. Right? They said, oh, who are you? Right? La, 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 la. right? And God killed them. The, the, the earth opened his mouth and swallowed them up. But look at his, his, what? his descendant. His descendant became the leader of the nation that he, his great, 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 great grandfather, want to destroy. Can you see? Out of darkness comes the light. And out of light, sometimes, comes darkness. It's always like that. So, everything is balanced. So, too, it is that from, from good, evil emerge. Sometimes, from something that is good, evil can emerge. Evil can emerge from things that is, look at, let's also, I'm, I'm going to give us another example. Look at David Hamelech. David Hamelech was a righteous man. He's a good man. That, that, that's why God chose him to be what? To be the, uh, the king and the leader and the captain of the Hebrew people, of, of what? Of, of Israel. But let's go down, down like three, four, uh, three, four, five generations. His children, grand, 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 grand children, they became evil. Right? Some of the of his drunk children, they, they, they became they, 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 they forgot the God of their fathers. Right? They, they begin to worship other gods. They, 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 they begin to, to, to worship Baal. Right? But is that the, the God that their great great great, great grandfather worship? They, they know. Because the Torah is there to teach them that this is what your father worship. This is the God of your father. But they say, you know what? Forget about that, you know, they are civilized. That's what I'm trying to, 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 to tell us. Because in the world that we live now, if you are if if, if you do things that is right, they tell you you are you are what you are uncivilized. Right? You, if you want to be civilized, you have to do, do things the way the world is doing it. Right? You have to believe that you know love is wonderful. You know, you have to believe that men can stay together with a man. That is civilization. You have to believe that women can live together with a woman. Right? This is good. You have to believe that a, a, a boy who is three years old, a, a, a girl, who, a, a boy who, who is three or four or five years old can come to the mama and say, Mama, I don't want to be a boy. And the mama and the papa say, Okay, good. I'm going to make you, uh, I'm going to make you a girl. Right? And they begin to put hormone and destroy the life of that boy or, or of that girl. Because it is civilization. If you say that is evil, that is not good, they say you are stupid. They say you don't understand. They tell you that you are a bigot. They give you names. They give you all kinds of bad, bad names because you believe in the Torah. Because you said this is not the way it is done. It's because you said this is not right. You have to follow their own story. You have to follow their own line. If you refuse to follow their line, they, they ban you. They say, oh, we remove him out of Facebook. We remove him out of Twitter. We ban him from speaking, you know, because he's talking nonsense. But that is the fact. I'm not making it up myself. The Torah is saying so. I'm saying what, what the Torah is saying. Why are you banning me for saying what the Torah is saying? And these the same people will come and tell you that we have free, free speech. This is democracy. You can say whatever you want. You can you can say your your what your opinion, but when I tell you my opinion, you don't like it. You ban me. Is that the democracy? That is the dictatorship. That is not democracy no longer. So this is what the Torah is telling us. Remember and understand that the light and darkness are intertwined. You can't say, oh, let me kill the darkness, let me destroy the darkness. It doesn't work that way. This darkness has positive in it that we can use, we can take to benefit ourselves. In the ideal world, in God's essence, the left and the right are harmoniously and be destructs, which means in the, in, in, the, in, 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 in the heavens, in the, in, in the sight of God, right? In the place of God, that the left and the right can be used equally. God can use it the, the way he wants. He is the creator of all things. He created the left and he created the right. So he understands both of them and, and he made them balance. 
This is the unity that prophet Zechariah envisioned. On that day when the Lord will be one and his name one. He said, I form the light and I create darkness. That's what God said. I make peace and I make evil. That's what God said in the book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 2. God said, I make good and I make evil. It's God. He can do whatever he wants to do. That is no one can say, oh God, he can't do that. No. He makes them all. He used them to his own benefit. So when he wanted to use them, he used them. So we cannot come and say, oh, this one, is, it, 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 this should, should, should be eradicated. I understand many people. They say, oh, if that is God, why that is war? Why that is hunger? Why that is people killing one another? Why is the war is like this? That you question, I understand. I understand where they are coming from. You question God. You question, you know, you question what, what is going on. You question that, why is this thing happening? If we are all saying that we are all children of God, right? We say that we are, there is one God, no? And we have all kinds of tens of millions and trillions of what? Of religion. And the basic of all things is what? Is love. For God is love. If when we get to that epitome, when we get to that epitome of real love, I'm not talking of selfishness. I'm talking about real love. There should be one faith. And that faith is the Torah. One. You, 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 you can say whatever you, you want to say. God is love. God said the Torah shall be one. For the citizen. For the strangers. For the I immigrant. For the slaves. For the everybody, there is no two Torah. There is only one Torah. God said to, to Moshe. You cannot differentiate and say, okay, you know, this one, this one is for is for is for the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov. Okay. And this one, this small one, is for you. And this one, I reduce it again. This one is for you. No, 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 no. The Torah is one for everybody. For we are all a children of God. That is it. So this is what God is telling us that we as a human being. We as a son of God, if we truly confess, if we truly say that we have love in us, then we will be like our father, which is, which is, which is in, in heaven. So what I'm telling us here is religion is for control. Religion is what is to control your mind, to control your finance. Religious or religion is negative, nothing positive out of it. It's man attempting to control man, but faith is true. Abraham has no religion. The Torah said, Abraham had faith in God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. That is it. Abraham is not, uh, Abraham is, is not Ju Judaizing. No. He had faith in God. Abraham was not a Catholic. No. He had faith in God. Abraham was not a, an Islamic man. No. He has faith in God. He's not a Buddhist. No. He's, he's not a Hindu. He has faith in God. And his faith was counted to him as righteousness. That is it. Religion, there's no way I've never seen that religion save you. Religion will never save you. Relationship save you. You have to have that relationship with your creator. The, this permanent relationship, that is what saved, not religion. Okay, so to, to, to quickly uh, finish it off of the Torah of this morning, the high priest is no exception, nor even the holies of holies, which is subject to contamination and must be purified and atoned for on Yom Kippur. So the holies of holies is not exception because the, the word, the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, is a human being. And, and as a human being, you commit sin. So you can bring your sin into the holies of holies. And then, and thereby contaminating the holies of holies. You see? So even though in the holies of holies, is there is sin. There is no... You, you think in your head, or you think in your mind, is there no sanctuary under the sun where you can hide, where there is no sin? I'm sorry to tell you there is no place. You cannot hide. It takes the grace of God. The world has many men and women of righteousness. Of course, 
We have men and women, plentiful, plentiful, that are righteous, that are good. Remember, uh, Eliyahu said, Oh God, I am the only one that remains. I am the only man that served you. The whole Eli 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 Eliyahu, a prophet, a prophet that sees all things, right? A prophet that did not die, that was taken up into heaven, right? So how come Eliyahu did not see that there are 7,000 who did not bow down to, to, to Toba? How did he see, how did he see, see that? Because he's telling me that he's a prophet. No, you should have seen that in, in the vision. God told him, no, my friend, you are making a mistake. You are not the only one. I have 7,000 men who have never bowed down to Toba. He was shocked. He was surprised. Oh, are you serious, God? I thought I am the only one. That is what I'm telling you. That is where human being is. Human being has limitation. But God is unlimited. Sometimes we, we, we think that we are the only one that remain in the world. We are the only one. That is what happened to, to my own people. Right? Ethiopia thought, we the, 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 the better Israel thought that no, no, no more Jew. All Jews are dead. Only us remain under the sun. Why a lot of people, you know, realize that, understanding that, that it is true. It is really, really true. So we have to, to do what? Atone. There is no sadiq upon the earth that does not do what? That does not sin. There is no anyone that is righteous that does not sin. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 20, it is written. The Yakut Shimoni 1, verse 44, explained that Azazel referred to the angels Shamze and Uziel, who fell from heaven, pleading with God to let them live on earth, so that the threatening flood against mankind may be averted. In the book of Genesis chapter 6, verse, 5, verse 4 and 5. They, the angel, unlike mere human beings, will abide on earth without becoming corrupted by evil. But God predicted that the angels once on earth will be subject to the evil urge. Nevertheless, they descended and immediately the sons of God took them as wives. The book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 2. Men sword and knives wore ornaments. On earth, even angel losses their hollows. Right? Possibly, this is the reason for reading from the Torah at Minha, the, uh, the parasha on incestuous relationship. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 6 to 30. What I'm saying, a rabbi is saying that Azazel, okay? The Azazels, these Azazel are two angels. And these angels, they mention their names, Shamze and Uziah. Right? These two angels pleaded with God. Say, God, please, don't destroy earth. Don't destroy mankind. Don't do that. We will go down and we're we, 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 we going to make everything right. Everything, everything will be good. Once we descended, there will be no, everything will be what? Fantastic. No, there will be no more sin. They will not sin, right? These two angels descended. As soon as they descended, what did they do? What? The sin grabbed them. And it's angel, not human being. They decide, oh, you know, we are angel. We are strong. When we come on earth, there will be no sin. Everything we will not commit sin. Everything will be strong. As soon as they descended, what? sin, look at them, smile. <laughs> Grab them. They begin to do what? To marry human beings. Is that their mission? No. That's not their mission. But because, this, because sin is tempting. Sin is very nice. Sin is beautiful. Sin is fantastic. It will manipulate your mind. You become crazy. That is sin. It, it, it tells you that everything that don't, it, it, it gives you all kinds of reasons. You say, oh, baby, I can do it this way and I can do it that. It gives you all kinds of formula. Right? That is what sin is. It manipulates you to the end that you even forget your, your name. You don't even know what the name your mama and your papa gives to you. That is sin. If an angel can sing and they begin to make ornaments, they make knives, they make weapons of war, they make all those things, you know, paint, you know, all, all these things, all this painting that you see women, they started this, those angels started it, they taught human beings all these things. Oh, how much more you and me? If angel can sing, how much more human beings? See, how much more human beings? 
The rebellious insight into the ambivalent character in human history is dramatically enacted in the section of the Torah in which two men go as choosing on Yom Kippur. The first section of the sixth chapter of the Mishnah on Yoma explains that the two men go of Yom Kippur should be alike in color, height, and price, and they should be together in their purchase, both the one to be, cho to be chosen by lottery as a sacrifice for Hadonai and the other to be destroyed for Azazel. They are initially, they are initially in this gush indistinct gushishishabu and only a mere lottery would differentiate them. Can you understand what I'm saying? Can you understand that? These two goats must be indistinct indistinguishable. You cannot distinguish them. You cannot say you cannot even they're like like um uh, that is uh, this uh, they call it um you know twins uh, uh, they call it uh, twins that cannot be di differentiated what they call it there's a word for it uh, uh, the twins that they, are, they don't look the same the same the same the same the same you cannot even differentiate them the same the same the same those goats would be those goats must be like that they are price the same their height the same their color the same you cannot differentiate this one from this one the only thing that can that can that we are going to use to differentiate them is by what is by lot. They cast lot upon them. They okay, say so okay. They make a lot. Go to one, go to two. Make a lot. Which one is for God and which one is for Azazel? It is only the lot that differentiate them. So, okay, okay. This is for God. Stay here. This is for Azazel. Stay here. And the one for God will be slaughtered. While the one for Azazel will be sent into the desert and be thrown from the what? From the mountain. You see, this is our world. This is the kind of world that we live in. It is very hard to differentiate. It's not in the heavens where thing is distinct. Here, all things are intertwined. God is giving us understanding. Man, understand your planet. Understand where you live. You can, you can, you can take a lot of positivity from the darkness. From this dark, there is a lot of good things. From the you said there's some good things that, that you can take to, to do to better your life, to better your understanding, to better your civilization, to better your technology. It's not everything that is dark that is bad, 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 bad. In the book of Psalm, God said, I make darkness under my feet. I cover myself with darkness. That's God. He created light, he created darkness. He create good, he create evil, he create all for himself. He is God. The, this parasha, okay. All right, we can we can't really we can't really up, uh, rely upon such a lottery. It is human task to distinguish good from evil in all human project. No place or person is exempt from corruption. No place or person is devoid of the spark of holiness. It requires wisdom to live with ambivalent. Alongside the insight of Jeremiah chapter 17, the heart is deceitful above all things, is the vision of Ezekiel 11 that promised transformation of the stony heart into a heart of flesh. Of course, in our in, in our task, in our in, in our in, in, in whatsoever we do, we have to distinguish. To try to understand that okay, uh, this is negative. I can do this. This is evil. I can do this. This is bad. Bad. I can do this. This is good. This is uh, this is the righteous thing. This is this is the right thing for me to, to do according to the Torah. Let us, <clears throat> as an individual, as a synagogue, as a people, as a community, follow the Torah. Only the Torah. Let's do it according to the will of God. This parasha select has the reading on, on Yom Kippur. Begins partly with the death of Nadab and Abihu, the priestly son of high priest Aaron. He says in uh, Latin, Intra Ecclesia Nulla Salut. I repeat, Intra, selexia, nulla, salu. That is Latin. And it means 
outside the church, according to the Christian, there is no salvation. That's what they say. It's outside the church. There is no salvation. So you can only have salvation in the church. That is their own understanding. And God is said it's a total lie. No. No. In the sanctuary, image can even image the darkness. That is the last place on earth. You, you as a human being, the last place on the planet you are, you are going to even think that the darkness can be there. The Torah gave us the understanding. Even in the holies of holies, you can't even imagine in your life that in the holies of holies can be darkness. But there, that's where it's hiding. And you can see it today. Alright? When they assume, I mean, the natives in in, in in the schools, you know, that most of these called the so-called missionaries, you know, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, how they slaughtered the natives. Right? Are they buried children? They call themselves the church. I'm, I'm just giving an example that other religion too, others, even though in our in our own religion too, the same. It's a lot of things like that. A, a, a lot of atrocities. So that is human beings. But God is asking you, God is asking me, God is asking each and every one, 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 one of us not to rely on religion. For religion will not save you. It cannot, it can, it are never saved, and it will never save. It is relationship with your creator that saves you. There is nothing original, there is nothing original in sin. Nothing. Sin rests at the door. In the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 2, God told who? God told Cain. Sin rests at the door. Be careful, and his desire is to have you. But that is liberating awareness. Because we are aware of the ambivalence. That is the state of having mixed feeling. This thing is mixed. They are intertwined. We are cautious of anyone who claims to speak out of the sanctuary without the steamer of fallibility. Because we know that we are all human beings and all our credo and act a human project. Because of the ambivalence in living, we may not forfeit critical discrimination or surrender moral judgment to another. We enter the sanctuary as fragile men and women seeking to sort the good from evil, careful to extract the spark of divinity lodged in the husk of existence. All are judged, all are atoned for, the pulpit and the pew, the laity and the priesthood, the vestibule and the ark, and all, and what and all, that all and all may be cleansed. Everything is cleansed. There is no exception that is not clean. Even though the holies of holies is clean, the ark is clean, everything is clean. Everything has to be sanctified. Everything, sins has to be removed. Right? In the world that, that we live, I know it's hard. You know, I know that we want to differentiate this from this, that, from that. Right. But at the end, all men sin. And we need for us to understand what the Torah is telling us. That in every state, in, in, this, in every state of life, in every point of life, there is negativity and there is positivity. You have to balance them all. You can use, you can extract a lot of energy. You can extract a lot of positive things from, 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 the, from the left side. A lot. Because from the left side, from Yeser, there's a lot of knowledge, wisdom, that can, that can support our world, our civilization. That can make us to grow, and, I mean to live a good and a well-being life, physically. But on the other side, on, this, on, the, on the right side, it's all spiritual that is that that will, that will lead us, that catapult us into the light to to come. The Torah gives us this understanding. That is a reason. As I said everything that is written in the Torah is a picture that God is giving us that we can be able to to, to learn and understand from it. Nowhere 
that you can that you cannot find sin. Don't let anybody deceive you, because they tell you, as I said, there is only salvation in one particular place. It's a lie. There is no salvation in one particular place. No, salvation is in God, only God alone. As only in Him that we can find salvation. Parasha Ashkemot after death. So from darkness comes the light. And both are intertwined. Shabbat shalom.